Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, as Andy said, yeah, I'm a, I'm a CTO, which means I'm not allowed to program. But I do get to dabble and I do get to uh, look at introducing cool technologies into uh, the company I work for. We're not using Couch at the moment in any of our production apps, but um, it's likely in the next year we will. So this talk's more is an introduction to Couch and then uh, what you can do with Python with it. Um, I've edited this presentation many times <laughs> because there's a lot of things in Couch that are really cool and you want to talk about, but at the same time this is a Python conference. So hopefully I've got it the right length. We'll see how we go. Okay, CouchDB. Uh, it's a NoSQL database, right? I didn't actually realise until about two weeks ago it meant not only SQL, but anyway. Um, there are lots of NoSQL databases, and they do, they're different things, key value stores, uh, columnless, you know, things like that. Couch is a document orientated database, okay? And documents have different things in it, so it's schemaless to cope with that. Probably the, the nice thing about it, uh, its API is HTTP, nice and restful. So pretty well means any programming language can talk to it. So of course makes it easy for, for Python. It, the replication is so easy. Ideal relational databases, I work with Oracle, Infomix, SQL Server, replication sucks. It's hard. With Couch, it's easy. And we're talking about replication, multi bidirectional, distributed, uh, different platforms, don't worry about it, things like that, that are very hard for relational databases to do cheaply. It's very scalable, and it's designed to be distributed. And the, the history of, of Couch is the guy that self-funded himself to work on this used to work on Lotus Notes. And you can either love or hate Lotus Notes, uh, but a lot of what Lotus Notes did good is what Couch does even better. So one of the important things to know about when you're dealing with uh, distributed databases is the CAP theorem. And the big problem with a distributed database is you really can only make two things possible out of the three that you need. And, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with databases, you want, thing, you want your data to be consistent. You want to be able to read it in exactly the same thing uh, wherever you're reading from in your distributed cluster. Uh, really importantly, because I deal with big government clients, you want things to be available all the time because they get really upset when you don't meet the SLA. And then partition tolerance, so you can split it across many servers, get your scaling and things like that. And as I said, we can only, only guarantee two. So Couch goes for toler partition tolerance and availability and has this thing called eventual consistency, which basically means in the end it will be consistent, um, which is not as horrible as it sounds, um, which is one of the reasons they can be performed quite well on a distributed system. Um, Paxos is actually a, a theorem, very hard to implement. There's a nice Google paper on how hard it was to implement. Um, I, I truthfully don't know if there's anything real out there. And then you've got what the relational databases do, which is all about being consistent data and available. But as I said, couch. Eventually, you will get the data that you want on one of the nodes you're accessing. OK, under the covers, I didn't do the drawing. It's a standard one on the site. Um, written in Erlang. So it's designed to crash and keep going. So you don't have to worry about those type of things. And because Erlang's a nice distributed uh, framework, you know, a lot of the nice things were are done behind. Originally, Couch was actually um, written in C++, so, um, but Erlang's where it's at. Uh, then it, JavaScript is how they do most of the stuff when you're um, accessing things. And then to do hard stuff like uh, text searches and things like that, you can run external processes and talk to it, so that's where the, the CERN is. Uh, the important thing about CouchDB is 
It has no locks, so it uses multi-version concurrency control. Um, and it has a thing called versioning, and, and sadly, most people, when they talk about versioning, it's like, it's automatically got versioning built in, so you'll be able to go back. Um, the versioning's really there for conflict resolution. And they, they recommend, if you want a versioning system, you write your own in it. Uh, and the big thing, it's append only. All right? So a lot of object databases work this way. You don't update, you append. And that allows them to basically add a record on the end, which makes it quite fast. The data is stored as JSON. Um, so that the nice thing about it being um, schemaless and with the JSON, with a bit of luck, to my pointer on. Um, so one of the things you can see there is, you know, in a relational database, you'd have to have a column per thing that you want. So this is a little contacts one, and I can basically have a list of phone numbers or a list of email addresses. So you don't get the constraint where that would immediately mean another table in a relational database if you want to want to handle that. Um, the other thing it does is it can store attachments. Um, so it makes it nice and easy. You don't have to think of another storage mechanism. Relational databases store attachments, they just don't do it nicely. And then the other important thing up there is the ID, which must be unique, and the revision number. So this is how it does its conflict resolution. Uh, this is the API. Okay, so most of the examples you'll see, they'll be using um, curl to access it. I thought, well, we're in Python, so we'll use the request module in Python. Uh, if you haven't come across this, the request module makes dealing with HTTP a pleasure. If anybody's used HTTP lib or URL lib, um, you keep going back to the docs to try and work out. This is exactly what you want to do. So the first thing is if we wanted to create a database, it's just a simple put. Okay? And by default, couch runs on that port, and I'm going to create a database called my contacts. It'll return OK, true, or an error message. As I said, the, the ID needs to be unique. You can supply your own. But there is, uh, basically, by making a call to this, you can get a unique ID, um, universal one, that you can use. And so then we can add a document. And all we're doing is we're appending the ID on the end of the URL to our database and we're just passing down some JSON. And so we get first record inserted into the thing and we get a nice um, 201 that it went well. Now, as I said, it's, it's an append-only thing, so there's no such thing as update. So in its RESTful interface, there isn't a post <laughs> because we, we are basically putting in a revision. And it took me a little while to... I'm, I'm looking for a post and I'm wondering why <laughs> it's a RESTful, but it's a revision. So. You've got to basically have the record completely. We can add something else on it, like we've done here with the email, and then you put in the new record. And you'll note what comes back is a new revision number. Okay, this is the important thing. You must always have this revision number when you're doing any operation, because that's how it handles the conflict uh, resolution. Get it wrong, you get a nice little error message. Uh, you can write your own conflict resolution routines, or you can just let Couch do it. Um, it'll, it'll put the conflicts in, you can actually query for them, and then sort it out afterwards. Uh, it comes with a nice uh, browser-based admin interface called Futon, um, as is the case with all open source projects. Um, there's Futon, there's Cushion, there's Lounge, there's... Um, <laughs> So, uh, but Futon allows you to navigate through the, um, the databases and stuff, and if I end up getting my talk wrong and it's really short, we can have a run through it. Um, you'll note down the side here, uh, some things there. This thing I've got highlighted here, we're in admin party mode, which basically means by default when you install Couch, anybody can do anything. Great when you're developing, really bad thing when you deploy. Uh, so you can set users up in there. You can also authenticate off lots of different authentication sources. It's got a lot better in the last couple of releases. Um, 
The other thing you can do from here is you can configure. Another thing to watch out when you install Couch, um, by default, it's in super fast mode, which means it doesn't guarantee it's going to write to the disk. Um, you should set that right to the disk true uh, as soon as you install. Uh, and this is where you do the set up the replication. Uh, the one limitation of Couch at the moment is it doesn't remember replication. So if you restart, you have to uh, send the command to do it or do it through Futon. But there's nice ways you can do it automatically on start. Um, and you can view the status. And the other thing, because it's an append database, you can run compaction from here. You can also do it using the API. Where it gets tougher for people that have been dealing in the SQL world um, is querying the data. Uh, it uses views. Okay? And these views are implemented using a B tree. Uh, it sounds horrible when the view is created. It actually. If you've got a big database, it's very slow because it goes away and builds the B tree. But as you add or update, it only adjusts those things on the, on the index. So the creation of the view is heavy, but the actual using the view and adding to that view while you're running is actually quite light. So you get some quite good performance. And views are done using MapReduce. And so by default, you write these in JavaScript. You can have permanent views, which are the faster ones, or temporary views. So a temporary view, you're going to be continually updating this B tree. You can do them in Futon when you're playing around. Uh, but then in the end, you would put them up. At Couch Conf, which was the end of last month, um, they announced in conjunction with the guy that wrote uh, SQLite that they're releasing a query language, which is UnQL. This is actually based on a Microsoft paper, and the idea is uh, to have this uh, query language for NoSQL databases. And so Couch will probably be the first one to actually have it. Um, it's a good and a bad thing. Um, once you get over the uh, thing that it's not SQL, um, the MapReduce stuff is really powerful. But again, it allows you to change database. OK, the, the first one of the quite cool things about Couch um, is because you can store anything in it, and because it happens to come with JavaScript, <laughs> and because there's a whole lot of nice JavaScript libraries like jQuery and Aventi and Mustache and things like that, you can actually make self-contained apps. And then when you have the self-contained app, and because you can distribute Couch and you can replicate it over things, you all of a sudden end up with this really massively scalable app. So you can actually do this with Python. All right? So not as nice as what Audrey talked about, writing everything in Python. Uh, but there are a number of tools for generating these couch apps. The Python one was the first one that came out. So if you look at what we can do here is we can generate our apps, which basically goes and creates a directory structure. And that sort of gives us that structure. And in the end, this is sort of what it's going to look like inside couch. I can go and edit some things. Then I create a view. Right? So this basically creates a subdirectory. I then go and um, change my view. Uh, the interesting thing I first stumbled on, um, it creates an empty reduce. If you don't get rid of it, it basically breaks your view. Uh, you need something in your reduce. Uh, and then what the really nice thing is then we just push it up to where your uh, CouchDB instance is. And at that point, it's up and running. So nothing fancy. Um, but you know, this is what this one is here. Uh, at the bottom, there's an IBM tutorial that basically creates this, which is quite a nice way of talking about it. So that's one way you can use Python, but use the JavaScript stuff to make it look OK. Um, the Couch DB guys pushed this really hard because it's, it's quite a killer feature. And Think about Lotus Notes was very similar to this with the idea of the apps inside Lotus Notes. But we're Python programmers. So we want to talk to it using Python. Um, these are three I have played with. There are lots of varying quality. Um, many of them are, I wrote this while I was experimenting with Couch. Um, it shows. Uh, <laughs> so the, the top one is 
that's the first one that came out. It tends to keep up to date pretty good with what's happening in Couch. Um, that's the one I'll, I'll show some examples in. Uh, Couch DB Kit is very nice. Um, the, probably the big differentiator, this is using the um, URL lib, and so there are some perceived performance problems with it. Um, CouchDB Kit uses a, a RESTful library that the same guy that wrote CouchDB Kit uses. Um, and this is a fork of this one that uses a different library for doing it. Um, this is GPL, this is BSD, so that's sort of where you end up with going the thing. And I, I work for a company, so I have to be careful. But go, to, go on PyPy, search CouchDB, there's a whole list of things, there's lots there's ones for making it look like Git and um, things like that. So it's, it's interesting. There's an imaging library one that does uh, image resizing. OK, so this is using the client. Um, so if you think about what the API is, it, it's relatively close. Uh, so those ones up here are sort of just pretty well replicating it. Uh, when you connect to the server, it's actually a dictionary. So if you've got model, basically all the databases on that server are available to you in that server instance. The other thing you've got to get your head around is we're using HTTP, so this is stateless and not holding a connection, which makes it really easy. You don't have to think about connection pools and stuff like that. Probably one of the more interesting things is to get real performance, you want to do bulk inserts. And so this is basically how you can do a bulk insert, pass a list and then it'll pass it back. Uh, this is an example of a query. So we've got basically our map function there. And what we do is we do our query, but it it's basically has not been run. It will not actually do the connection and bring the data back until you actually uh, use it. So at the point where I hit the results in the first time, that's when the query actually goes. And the CouchDB library sort of has the server part and a document part. And one of the ways you see a document is as a row. Okay, and you can manipulate this. It's basically relatively easy, but it's still sort of your um, JSON style that you're dealing with. So they also have this uh, additional thing called mapping where they, where they map directly into a Python object. Okay, so it means you can do things like that. Um, and as you'll see from the code here, you don't have to have all the fields. I mean, that's the nice thing about the schemaless database. The field's not there, it's not there. You don't get none, you don't get, <laughs> you, 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 um, you can reference it, it just contains nothing. Um, and so the difference is, is when, when you're dealing with this document, which is sort of different from the document from the previous one, is it has the ability to store and load. And because of that, you don't really need to think too much about the, about the versioning, because it's actually doing it for you. OK, um, as I said, your views by default are in JavaScript, and they're not too hard to grasp. Um, but you can write views in Python. And so what Couch does is have the ability to run these external processes. They'll, it'll manage them for you. So with the uh, CouchDB Python module, by putting this line in the, in the CouchDB local any file, we basically, when we start up Couch, we end up with this little Python view server running. And then when the Python view server is running, if I go into Futon, I get a little, where it normally only says JavaScript, and now says JavaScript and Python. And so I can write my map function and my reduce function if I wanted to, and, but write it in Python. So we use yield to bring it out. And then basically, you get the records that are returned. Now, the structure is really simple for this document, but you'll see lots of other stuff in there. So there's things about, has, was compaction running when this record got created? Was replication on? Things like that. Web framework support's pretty good. Uh, the Django one uses CouchDB Kit has Django support built in. You create models, which are your documents. Uh, in your settings file, you define your CouchDB. Uh, 
There's only sort of one an unnatural act that you have to do, is you have to say that you're connecting. <laughs> uh, but it does work. Flask has a beautiful one. Um, it has all the paging and everything built in, because think about how you would actually page this document database where you've got all these distributed nodes and things. It's not quite the same as doing the, uh, the limit function on uh, a SQL adapter. So you can splice this paging and things like that. Uh, web to Pi has an experimental support for CouchDB. Um, I've used the first two, I haven't used the Web to Pi one. The other one is Form Alchemy actually supports Couch. So if you use Form Alchemy for rendering your forms in your um, Python web framework, you can actually get it to match off against the uh, documents. Uh, I didn't mention Pyramid, because there isn't one. I'm working on one. <laughs> um, it's a definite work in progress. Uh, <clears throat> there's no code up there yet. There will be. Uh, but it's really based on how the Flask one works uh, because it sort of fits in nicely. I, I just want to add in support for multiple databases. Uh, the way you connect to the database and Pyramid is totally different from Flask, so we do it by passing the database around in the request. Um, some other stuff there which you can sort of see is that's putting an attachment up. Uh, so that you get the concept of almost like a transaction, you pass the document that you modified with the put attachment, otherwise it's a separate operation. And, uh, or we just do the store. So, a couple of resources, I mean Google's just the best thing for doing it. There are lots of um, blog posts and that on using Couch, lots of them I'm using Python. Um, it's when, when I started looking at all the um, databases like that, I was going down the MongoDB path. <laughs> um, and then try Couch on the side. And for me, it's a nice fit. But like all these um, NoSQL databases, you've really got to look at for what you're trying to achieve. Each one of them has some particular thing that makes it really good for a specific task. So I'm not advocating that you do everything in CouchDB, but I, I, what I'm advocating is certainly look at NoSQL databases as filling a certain niche. I'm not saying let's ditch SQL databases because they do some things a lot better than what a NoSQL database does. I don't, I use multiple programming languages, I'm happy to use multiple uh, databases. So that's my introduction to Couch with Python. Are there any questions? Yes, I'd be, I'd be curious as to some of your sort of views down with Mongo versus Couch, where about sort of that system uh, Yeah, a lot of people use Mongo for logging because it is really high performance. That high performance comes at um, making some decisions about what you're willing to lose. Um, they, they're trying to fix that up. Uh, the other thing too that I've uh, found with Mongo, and it's not, it, it's just again I've got to think about deployment, um, getting it um, compiled <laughs> on a platform you haven't come across. On most platforms you can get Erlang, get it on and run it up. Um, but certainly if you've got something where you're doing massive appends and things like that, Mongo's the way to go. I, I was trying to find the reference to a, a a website that I stumbled on, and I'm annoyed that I didn't say the URL. There's a, a, the guy's done a really good comparison of the NoSQLs and even come up with and said, you know, this is a good one for this, this is a good one for that. Um, I'll, if I find it, I'll put it up on my Twitter account, so I'm hexdump42, so easy to find. Um, I think the thing is you don't, pro probably the toughest one is trying to think like it's SQL. Um, one of the things I should have put up there is uh, there's a, the CouchDB definite guide book, right, which is an O'Reilly book, is free online as well. And it actually has a cookbook for SQL jockeys. Um, and, but when you read what they're trying to do, they're trying to get your head around not thinking like an SQL thing. So one of the things that's nice about the views 
You've got to, you think more, you think less about what's contents in your document and more about how you want to see that content. And so the two parts of what's coming out of a view is your key and then the data that you want matched against that key. And so that's what, that with Couch, because everyone's different how they, and I, that's why the um, no QL stuff's coming. <laughs> um, but with Couch, you basically have that key and then you can, on the um, API, I didn't show it there, you can put your start and end filters and things like that. So you can almost put your equivalent of your where clause. Um, you can, in your views, use regular expressions to limit things. So if you think about it, your, your view is almost like your, your extraction mechanism. So the fact that your data is sitting in one format, you can make it come out in another. Um, the tough bit is, which I found, is you keep thinking, do I now go and create another? Because I can hold multiple documents in one CouchDB instance, you know, different types of documents. You know, should I have my attachments off in another document? That's the tough one. In the end, I, my feeling is that if you can get it all existing in one document, you're better off. Because if you delete things, all well, the cascading happens for you in that. Um, and, it, and then you can use the um, map to limit what you actually see. And you could have like a tight document type to limit as well. That's the examples that I tend to be seeing. The other thing I failed to mention is it also runs on Android and on um, Apple ISO, uh, iOS. So you can actually, um, it's still fairly beta, but you can basically deploy them on that. You can talk to them using native apps or it's a good use for the couch app stuff. So um, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm looking at it. The, the, the opinion is that um, the views are a little bit slower and you have to be a little bit careful if you're importing um, libraries because of the way the views execute. There's little tricks and if you look up, you know, making my Python views run faster type thing on Google, um, it's basically what happens, the imports happen every single time you access the view. And so you, you do little tricks like passing it down as a parameter into the view and then it's already loaded. So there, there are ways to speed it up. The other thing which I haven't tried yet, but in the, the latest version of Couch, external processes were originally standard I.O. There is now the ability to talk through a web proxy, which means these external processes can be on separate machines, which means you can probably develop it in a web framework and not have to jump through the hoops or be limited to using Python Couch DB for doing the, the view server. All right, I think that's uh, time up, so uh, thank you very much, Mark.